What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. How many times has this happened to you? Well, if you're like me and if you have ever taken apart or put together a lower at some point in your assembly career, you have battled with your rear takedown pin. Whether it's the spring, the detent, maybe you're just taking it apart, not paying attention, and everything flies and shoots out of the back. It's happened to everyone. If it's never happened to you, then you're a liar, or you've never done it. Because I guarantee you, at some point, it has happened to all of us. But there is a way. Thankfully, there is a way, an easy way, and a relatively inexpensive way to ensure that that never happens to you again. And that entails these. Some 4 by 40 by 1 8 of an inch set screw. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install a set screw in our rear takedown to ensure that we can take this off and never have to worry about that spring backing out and when we're installing it we never have to worry about bending and trying to manipulate that spring to make sure we get our back plate on so first things first we got to do is we got to take everything apart now I'm assuming everyone knows how to do this um, you want to make sure that your buffer is out which it is I take the lower off of the upper there's no need to have everything here so make sure that your buffer is out you're going to loosen your castle nut here and to do that you're going to use an armor's wrench and that armor's wrench just fits nicely into those notches there I would obviously clamp this down because it's going to be a little tight these should be tightened to 40 foot pounds so um, if yours comes off pretty easy, chances are it wasn't tightened to mill spec to begin with. So you want to make sure these, when we're putting it back and retightening it up, we're tightening it to 40 foot-pounds. And the only way to truly do that and know for short is to use a torque wrench, which we will do. But I digress. We're going to take this guy off. You're going to bring it all the way back, as far back as it can go. And then you're already starting to see here. Our spring is coming out, so you're going to move your back plate off. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew our buffer tube. Now remember, you have your a buffer retaining pin in here, so if you go and you unscrew this right now, um, that's going to come flying out, so make sure you put your hand over that, that little detent. Unscrew and you'll feel it give way. There it comes with the spring. Put that off to the side. And then here comes our detent spring. And we can take our buffer tube all the way out. So all that's left at this point is to get our detent out, which hopefully we can. It's in there pretty good. There it is. And our takedown pin obviously will come with it as well. So what we're going to need for this project, it's fairly easy, shouldn't take us more than a couple minutes, is you're going to need obviously 4x40x18 by by set screws. I have 10 here, so I could do 10 ARs. And you're going to need a 4x40 tap. And obviously the tap wrench that goes with it. And you're going to need a little bit of cutting fluid. For us, we're just going to use some good old 3-in-1 oil. That's going to be more than enough. Let's put down our little paper here. Now we're going to get our tap. This is our back hole here where our spring and detent will go in. And we're essentially just going to thread that. Now remember, our screws are only one eighth of an inch, so we're only going to have to go in one eighth of an inch here. And 
We start off with a little bit of oil on the tap just to make sure it cuts evenly, smoothly. So set it up so it's parallel, pretty perpendicular. And you're just going to get it started here. And you'll feel it start to go. Okay, so it's starting to go here. Now as you're doing this, you're going to do a couple turns, back it off, because you don't want the, ch the chips to start to block your, um, your tap. So I take it on, take it back a little, and continue the process, just taking a little bit off at a time. spray a little compressed air here through our hole in our detent get out any of the additional chips or whatever we may have in here and let's do a test fit so we've got our set screw here we're just gonna screw it in make sure we got our depth right and as you can see, that is perfectly flush with the back. So we can go ahead and put this guy back together. You grab our takedown pin. Takedown pin goes back in with obviously the detents facing forward. And we're going to drop our detent back in through our hole. So now with your spring, your set screw is going to sit one eighth of an inch in. So you can actually, if you want, and I would suggest doing this, just get your spring and trim off about that one eighth of an inch. Okay, so it's a slightly shorter detent, right? So it's going to sit in there. Pretty nice. So the spring is going to sit in there like so. It still is protruding. You know, we haven't cut it flush. We still want to have some spring tension on this. And we're going to get our set screw and try not to lose it. Just try it this way. Now, I wouldn't suggest putting lock Loctite on this. I think that's uh, really not necessary. But we're going to get our set screw in here. And we're going to start it up. And we're going to just set it home. Make sure it's tight. You don't want to, obviously, you don't want to strip that because um, that would be bad news. But you can see now we've got our D10 is in. Needs a little bit of, of uh, breaking in again, as they usually do when they get redone. Um, but that's just as easy as getting a hammer here and just working it back and forth a couple times. Okay, now we should be able to yeah, use this by hand, no problem. It's got a little bit of click to it, not super tight to get out, it's pretty much perfect for me. And we're gonna go ahead and look how easy it is now Look how easy it is now to install your buffer. No spring to worry about. Um, no screws coming out. All you gotta worry about now is getting your buffer retaining spring and your buffer retainer in position. And you just screw that down. Make sure it's seated correctly. All right, so you don't want to over tighten it, you know. I'm going to make sure we've got it set it set correctly. And we put our plate back on. Castle nut on. Let's 
then that's it. No messing around. It's it's super easy. If you want to take it off, let's say you want to change the sling plate, just take it off. You don't have to worry about messing with your detent. Um, it's it's all there. Your rear takedown pin, all of that hardware is still in there, and it's totally available if you need to. But it's totally out of your way when you don't want to mess around with it. And that to me is convenience. Um, I just it's just a great hack that I absolutely love so I hope you guys check it out I hope you guys try it out these uh, this is a, a four right so we're using a 4 by 40 by 1 8 set screw this is a 4 by 40 tap you can get these on Amazon for five dollars so you get ten screws for five dollars you can get the tap and the tap wrench on Amazon for ten dollars so for fifteen dollars you can do this and you can do it 10 times um, and to me that is a great just quality of life hack for cleaning for all kinds of things now to finish this off just remember that when you're doing your castle nut you're gonna torque it to 40 foot pounds okay it's very important that you do that um, and then in our upcoming video, I'm going to sh talk to you and show you about staking your castle knot, which is the final step in ensuring you have a Loctite bond on your buffer. But look out for that video upcoming soon. So until next time, make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.